Good morning and welcome to Grace Middle Way and the joys of televangelism. Uh, we're glad you're with us today. Uh, we had a little choral interlude this morning. Can you hear me now? All right, everybody. It looks like we got sound back. Technical difficulties are over. And uh, so we shall begin again. <laughs> blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins and Give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. 
He who brings out their host and numbers, numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 147, verses 1 through 12, and ending with the hallelujah, found on page 804 of the prayer book. Hallelujah, how good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He's not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Hallelujah. The epistle is from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel, For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, although I am not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I might share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue at Capernaum and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I always always say, if you were compelled to stand for the Gospel, please be seated. Grab your coffee, what have you, and let's hear the message of the Lord. In Mark, the good news of Jesus is seen through healing. In this case, the healing of Simon, Peter's mother-in-law. I mean, people were always looking for healing. And once that word spread that Jesus has healed this woman, Simon, Peter's mother-in-law, we hear that many were brought to his house to be healed, and Jesus did heal many and cast out many demons. Now, in our society today, we still see people in need of healing, people still wanting to be healed. I mean, it's natural. We all want to lead a long, healthy life. We want to be able to take care of ourselves, take care of our families, to be able to provide for them. And in order to do that, of course, we need to be healthy. And we don't want to be unhealthy to that point where we may feel as if we are a burden to our families. Nobody wants that. Now, in a society, once a need has been identified, along with that need comes opportunity. Opportunity to exploit people, to sell them hope, sell them false hope. Now, our need and our desire for health is exploited daily by those wanting to make a quick buck or even lots of bucks from us. Even in physical sites, uh, some with historical or mythical events that may be associated with Jesus in some way or some vision that's occurred there, people will flock to those places too in search of healing. We are all looking to be healed. Now, from all Christian denominations, uh, we've all read and, and know about the scenes of healing that we see throughout the Bible, throughout the Old Testament and throughout our New Testament. And we believe that surely God will not disappoint us, that when we come to Him in need, in need of healing, that He will be there and He will place healing in our lives. When Jesus began this ministry, as we hear in Mark, it's done with healing. Think about this first chapter of Mark as we've started through it this year. I mean, we're not even through the first chapter of Mark, and what have we heard about, or what have we seen, if you've been reading it all? We saw Jesus get baptized. We saw the Holy Spirit descend upon him. Then the Spirit drove him out into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan. Then he went back to Galilee to call his disciples. You'll recall this, two Sundays in a row, we had that theme of follow me, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. It kind of went along with what we heard in uh, Isaiah where uh, Samuel was called by God, that God is always calling us. Then we see him enter the synagogue where he heals a man with an unclean spirit as well as, just last week, teach with authority. 
which seemed to really confuse a lot of people in that scripture. And all of this took place in less than 30 verses. Mark really packs it in there for us. And the disciples still really don't know who Jesus is. And now they've gone into Simon Peter's house where her, his mother-in-law was sick. And our Lord took her by the hand and lifted her up. The fever left her and she got back to her life. She went immediately back to her life. This is not one of those scriptures to be used to subjugate women. What matters here is that when one is healed, you can immediately go back to your life. You can go back to being a part of the kingdom. When Jesus touches his life, it gives that life hope. Hope where maybe there hadn't been any before. And I'm sure for Peter's mother-in-law and all those who were brought to the door to see Jesus in hopes of healing felt as if they had no hope. They may have felt as if they were at the end of their rope. And now healing isn't the only thing that Jesus came to do. And the very first things we hear from Jesus in Mark is he talks about the kingdom of heaven coming near, the kingdom of God coming near. And when that kingdom comes in, it comes in with a healing spirit. Healing in a world then as now that is full of pain, it's full of suffering, and of course, full of death. And most importantly, the kingdom then and now, is right here. It's right here. It's available. It's available to all of us. We are all in need of healing. I'm telling you, even if you're the most physically fit person in the world, your soul can still need healing. Your spirit can still need healing. I mean, look at our society today. The outside shell is what the world is attuned into. Remember when I started off this morning, I had mentioned the world wanting to make a buck or two off of us with a quick sell of some type of false hope. I mean, when we watch television, and we'll see it today if you watch the Super Bowl, all these commercials that we see, of course, some of them are very funny. But when you just watch TV or even listen to the radio for a day, how many times do you hear commercials about exercise equipment? If you just buy this stationary bicycle, your life is going to change for the better. Yeah, it may change for the better physically. Or diet aids or special diet food that's just going to change your life and everything is going to be better. All these products designed for the outside you, our shell. You can look great on the outside, but the inside can still be hurting, regardless of how well you look or how physically fit you are or how much money you have. Your inside can still have a tremendous void. And so no matter how much you try to fill that void with the remedies that the physical world will uh, promote to you, it won't fill that void. It will not heal the hurting soul. The only remedy is Jesus. And if we're seeking to be healed, if we want to have that real change that has a tremendous effect on our lives and even those around us, which is what the kingdom of heaven is, is and how that works, as our lives change for the better through Jesus, that passes on to others. Change, this change that we hear and read about in the gospel, all of that comes through faith in Christ. This then is how our lives are changed. This is how we are healed. Not through diet fads and things like that. Those will all pass. How many people do you know that have exercise equipment that now sits in a corner gathering dust or bought a row machine and put it under the bed never to be used? I know I'll hear about that from somebody later. This became... Those things are just material and designed for this world. But when you take Christ into your life, it's not like those passing fads. It becomes a constant. And we know to just like those Jesus healed, even though Jesus heals and heals those physically that we read about and hear about, 
and he heals us internally. Jesus also lets us know that we are still vulnerable too. We will all die eventually. That's going to happen to all of us. But between then and now, between that time that we do pass, we have the opportunity to help others, help them understand that the kingdom is near, healing is near. Come with me. Come and see. You've heard all that. Follow Christ. Come check it out. He will heal your soul. And there's a lot to be said for when the soul is healed. A lot of times we just end up feeling better physically as well. And so today's message is that in that moment of healing, when we experience God in our lives, we recognize that we are totally dependent on God. Totally dependent on God and the kingdom. There is no way, we have no power to heal ourselves. Jesus' message then and today is kind of hard to grasp. He had to first let them know and us know that, look, you are vulnerable and you need God's love. I need God's love. You need God's love. And for Jesus, it's in God that all the change that we need in our lives occurs. That's where all the healing comes from. We experience our need for something or someone beyond ourselves. We need God's strength. God's strength we find through faith in Christ not only makes us well, but makes us whole. How many times do we talk about loving God, heart, mind, and soul? It is one. We, it's, you can't be whole unless all of that is with Christ in you. That is how all those are made well. Jesus cast out many a demons that day in our reading. And for today, we still have many demons out there that people need cast out. I'm talking about addictive behaviors, everything from gamblers and things like that, of drugs, of course. And we know there are social agencies, and I talked about this before. Yes, there are social agencies, and they do a great and wonderful job, but we as Christians, we do should be doing the same, but we should be doing it in the name of Christ. And as we talk about all this healing, how do you know when you're healed? How do you know when you're healed? I know it sounds like an awful question, but the answer is obvious, of course, when the pain is gone, when you're no longer hurting, or the fever has come down, where you don't have the disease anymore. But in the gospel, we hear something better. And you heard me mention it in the first paragraph this morning. The fever left her, and she began to serve them. You remember I said she went back to her life. She went back to her life, serving others. We know we are healed when we start serving others. We will no longer be slaves to our hurts, to our demons, and all that. We will be made whole through Christ. And when we are made whole, we can help others be made whole. And that, brothers and sisters, is how the kingdom comes near. But we're all volunteers. So we all need to just volunteer and do what we can. Amen. I take it we didn't lose any sound? We're still rocking. All right. If you will, on the screen, you will see the uh, Nicene Creed. Let us recite that together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people will be found on the screen as well. If you have someone you would like us to lift up uh, along with those on our prayer request list, Uh, Just type it in the comment there, and if it gets on in time, I will add it to our prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for our presiding bishop Michael and our bishop Mike, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, We list those on our prayer request list. Donna, David, Mag, Kaylee Rose, Lynn, Mary Ellen, Stanley, Haley, Leslie, Nancy, Mary, Sandy, Mark, Carolyn, Bianca, Linda, Raymond, Ann and Warren, Eamon, Philip, Bill, Mark, Terry, Nancy and family, Carrie Beth, Lonnie, Barbara, Brady, Diana, Lorraine, Bruce, Wendell, Elizabeth, Ralph, Crystal, Honey, Kim, Jimmy, Dennis, Carolyn, Robert and Margaret, Jim, the Reverend Canon Mark Seitz, victims of natural disasters, our service members at home and abroad, Christians around the world, all those that are being called up to serve and vaccinate with the uh, COVID vaccine. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion forgive us our sins, unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Feel free to greet each other with peace there online. That would be great. And while you're doing that, if you do want to say peace and respond with the peace to us, I will also make one other announcement. Uh, um, Warren LaRue's daughter asked me to thank everybody who participated in his, uh, I'll call it his 100th birthday parade celebration. Um, he received many cards and... Uh, and a parade of cars going by his house uh, to wish him well on his 100th birthday. Uh, Warren is a true American hero who served in World War II uh, in Europe and the Pacific. Uh, so he was a very uh, a great man, and we wish him well. Our Eucharistic prayer will begin on page 361 if you're using the prayer book. If not, again, it's on your screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and with archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he <clears throat> broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And let us recite the prayer on the screen together. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And our final prayer on 365. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessings of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.